So let's talk about arginine supplementation, possible side effects. So uh, I've shown you a lot of research studies today in people, doses as high as 30 plus grams a day. So we're talking about pretty high doses. Now, in my experience, when you stay in this kind of three to six grams a day dose, you don't generally tend to see a lot of side effects, minus one, and we'll talk about that one in a minute. But uh, as far as GI side effects, that's usually nine plus grams a day, diarrhea, nausea, bloating. Of course, everybody has a unique experience. So, you know, if, if this is what's happening to you, you might reconsider how much you're taking. Um, now, one of the other things is herpes virus activation. So if you've ever been diagnosed with herpes, simplex one, where you get fever blisters, or even sexual herpes type two, where you get, uh, you get genital blisters or sores, arginine in high doses can activate herpes virus, and it can cause you to have more flares. So keep that in mind. If you have that diagnosis prior, this may be something that isn't the best fit for you. And I would say if you, if you do have that, you would want to probably take lower doses, not quite three to six or higher, but probably you'd want to be somewhere in the one to two grams a day range, one to two grams per day. And you probably want to offset that a little bit and take lysine. So you'd probably want to take one to two grams a day of L-lysine with it because the reason why this happens is these two compete. Lysine and arginine compete for, this, for the absorption receptors in the gut. And so, um, you know, there have been a number of studies that, that, that combine both arginine and lysine with enhanced benefit. But if you have that, you definitely would want to consider using the lysine with it. And I would encourage any of you who are, who are thinking about this, go watch, go also watch my lysine crash course as well and get more additional information about lysine. But again, arginine can cause a lysine depletion which can activate virus, uh, viruses like herpes virus. We have hypotension as well. Um, this, this stuff vasodilates your blood vessels and if you have a, already a, a very low blood pressure where you're already struggling, like some people with POTS disease, are not, you know, they, they, they may not do as well with arginine because it takes their blood pressure down too low. So if you're one of those with that type of diagnosis, just be aware of it, you know, and if you're gonna use it, start with lower doses, monitor your blood pressure, talk with your doctor, and, uh, and be cautious. Now, if you're taking blood pressure medicines and you start arginine and your blood pressure drops, as I showed you earlier, you know, that systolic pressure and where that one study dropped or rather the diastolic pressure, that bottom number dropped seven points. So think about that in terms of all the studies I've shown you over the years about blood pressure. So like magnesium can drop your blood pressure five to 10 points. CoQ10 can drop it five to 10 points. Arginine can drop it. Vitamin B1 can drop it. Um, you know, if you're doing all these things, you might be getting a compounded effect. You, if you're on blood pressure medicine, monitor your pressure because if you start getting super tired, super dizzy, you know, it's very possible that your medicines are now working too strongly. They're, they're working too strong because you've added the synergism of good quality nutrition to that mix. So just keep that in mind. And if this is you too, watch my crash course on blood pressure if you haven't. We've got you know, hundreds of crash courses in our library, you know, on our channel. So just, you know, take advantage of those. Those are free for you to learn and educate yourself about nutrition. Now, going back to the herpes virus activation, if you look at the structure of arginine and you look at the structure of lysine, they're very similar. And this is part of that, uh, part of that competition with each other is they compete for the same receptors in the small intestine for absorption. So that's, that's the reason why, again, some of you chemical nerds might enjoy that slide. Let's talk about food sources of arginine. It's pretty simple here. We're, these are grain-free food sources. For those of you who follow me, you know I'm, I'm more famous for my work around no grain, no pain. If you haven't read my book, I highly encourage you to get a copy. But, so we always talk about grain-free sources. And so what do we have? We have meat and poultry and seafood and dairy. These are probably the bigger and uh, highest sources, if you will. So this is going to be 
best bang for your buck, but there are plant-based sources as well. Legumes are good sources of arginine or can be, and then nuts and seeds as well. So, pretty simple. Eat more arginine. Let's talk about lab testing. So there's two major kinds of lab tests that generally can be used to measure arginine levels. Um, the most common and the one that most doctors, if you ask, could potentially run um, is this one right here, the plasma. And so that reference range, 32 to 150 micromoles per liter, is a pretty standard reference range across the board. And so if you're falling, really, in my opinion, if you're falling below 50, you probably want to look at that. Now, the problem with plasma is that it reflects your last meal. It reflects your last day, if you will. Um, the half-life of arginine is not very long, uh, but it reflects your last meals or approximate day of consumption as opposed to reflecting kind of your long-term status. So you could have, for example, you could have eaten a meal that was decently high enough in arginine and then go get your blood work drawn the next day and you could have what looks to be like normal levels, but in reality, you've, if you've been you know, on a more of a lower protein type of diet for an extended period of time, you know, that, that meal prior to the test could, could really trick the test. So my favorite way to measure for long haul is what's called INA, intracellular nutrition analysis. Um, and this is, you know, INA is, is, a, is a form of what's known lymph, as lymphocyte proliferation. It's a very accurate way to assess nutritional status over a six-month time frame because the use of the lymphocyte, they have a six-month life cycle, the use of lymphocytes to do the analysis allows us to get that six-month window versus that, you know, reflection of the last day or so of what you've been eating. So this is going to be a more accurate long-term status. This is going to be more just kind of a, a spot check, if you will. Um, but if you have no options, better to have some data than zero data. I love testing versus guessing, so um, I'm a fan in that regard. If you ask your doctor for INA and they look at you like you have horns coming out of your head, you can come visit me at glutenfreesociety.org. We'll put a link in the show notes for you and you can check out and read more about intracellular nutrition analysis as a, as a means to measure your arginine status. Okay, so all that being said, let's talk, final, I, finalize out on um, dosing. So if you're, are you considering using arginine? So there's, there, I've shown you a, a huge array of range of doses today, but if we're talking about kind of a base dose for arginine, we're talking about two grams or so a day. Now, if we're talking about we want to get a, a little bit stronger, more therapeutic, and this comes goes into what your goals are. So, like, if you're really trying to improve erectile dysfunction or cardiovascular function, most of the research is going to be anywhere from 3 to 30, and that's a huge range of, of a difference. So, 3 to 30... Uh, grams per day over split dosing. So you wouldn't want to take, for example, all 30 grams at one sitting. You'd want to split that out over three doses if you're going that high. My advice is if really, if you're getting up over, if you're getting up over six, seven grams, then work with a doctor or an expert, a nutritional expert to, to monitor you. Um, it's just would be a smart thing to do. Monitor your levels if you're gonna get up into those higher ranges, work with an expert. But this should give you some context for how you can go about using arginine uh, as nutrition support in your day-to-day -day life. So there you have it, our crash course on arginine. I hope you found it helpful, and do me a favor. If you enjoy the Dr. Osborne Zone, consider using our, uh, our resources. We have a tremendous amount of videos on YouTube. If you've not already subscribed, make sure you come over and subscribe and check out our Crash Course Library where we go deep on many, many different types of topics, vitamins, minerals, different types of diseases, etc. Also, come visit me at Gluten Free Society if you're looking for high quality supplements. We carry over 100 products and uh, we appreciate your support in using our products uh, for your nutritional needs. It helps us keep the advertisers at bay and it helps us keep the show running. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks for tuning in. Don't forget to join me Thursdays 
at 12.30 Central Standard Time for our live Pick Dr. Osborne's Brain Q&A. So bring your toughest nutrition questions every Thursday at 12.30 Central Standard Time right here on our channel. Thanks and have a fantastic day. We'll see you in the next show.